Hope you've got your water rings because we're going swimming. What? Hope you've got your water wings because we're going swimming. Is this place called Mystic Cave? Mystic Lake. Oh, I figured you'd make a Sonic CD reference. Wait, Sonic CD? That's that's Sonic 2. Sonic 2 reference. Yes, well, it's lake, not cave. By the way, hard mode re um, requires that I do this, so immediately it was like, okay, no, we're going, we're going back. It's so weird how that's just so easy to mess up. And this is where, I think this is where one of the pyramid pieces are. Well, wait, this is where one of the, this is where a heart thing is. Like, okay, I guess in that in that vein it really wasn't that important it's just that because i know that enemy because after that last thing with the hotel i don't count on enemies to respawn um i decided okay we're, we're starting that over again now these weird things are beaten by going directly under them and going up and the hitbox is kind of finicky so you have to be right under them or else it's they're not gonna care that's a cool way to defeat an enemy. Yeah, but at the same time, like, just from visual cues alone, you wouldn't have any indication of that, really. Are you sure this isn't Mystic Cave? Completely sure. It's Mystic Lake. This seems... This was the only underwater stage, right? No. Well... Yes. It's the only stage that focuses on being underwater. Now that doesn't seem like it should work, but it does. I I remember being tripped up by that because I'm like, this does just like it, that sh physics doesn't work like that, and this game doesn't care. Either way, I unfortunately have to say that where the weird thing is that outside of this hard mode, um. Well, not outside of the hard mode. I've realized that I've had way more issues just like on a collective general in the Emerald Passage than I really should have any right to. It's the easiest one. And yet, like, just maybe maybe it's because I know it's the easiest one why I'm, it feels like I get so reckless. Like... Look at that. I knew that guy was coming out. Why did I even bother to try and get the um the money? Like it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, but you're on brand by doing that. Well, yes. But um oh man, that reminds me there was some there was some cool Wario thing I saw recently, but I can't remember what it was. Ah, it's driving me crazy. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, that also is up. Oh yeah, the 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 Wario Land shake it. Man, I think they didn't do another Wario. I I think they didn't do another Wario Land because that game, um, despite all of its polish and great stuff, didn't sell well. Um. Not only that, but the last Wario Land style game right before it also didn't sell that well, I think. Here's the thing. M Wario... Um, Wario Land Master of Disguise. I don't know how good of a game it is. Because I know barely anything about it. It was, from what I know, barely marketed. Hardly anybody knows about it. And while more people know about Wario Land Shake It, it's not given much of any press at least from what I'm seeing I could be wrong but it just didn't seem like it got the attention it deserved and it sucks because Wario Land Shake it is a very well designed game Master of Disguise that's after 4? yes Master of okay. Disguise is DS but yeah it, it seems I mean, it's not impossible. 
what recent I guess you could call I guess you could call um Metro the Dead franchise that was revived. Well, I I wouldn't call it dead. Would, would I call it dead at that point? I don't think I'd call it dead. Not really. I mean, Finish and Force existed. They were making games. Finish and Force is literally a. We need to put out a game so that the franchise doesn't seem completely dead. They just didn't expect people to hate it. Well, at that well, it's almost it's it's almost like they went to just like two completely different directions with. Oh, we're gonna bring this. We're gonna bring like the like classic Metroid, but it's like it. You're gonna feel like you're playing classic Metroid, but in three D, instead of the Prime experience, and then they botch that up with horrible writing. That's basically it. Then the Federation Force comes is like, we're gonna make something nobody asked for, but not really distinguish it at all from anything. Like. Seriously, just it's the final just boss like was the, Samus. How do you mess that up? The final boss wasn't Samus. No, it was Samus being mind controlled. It's like, how do you mess that up? I mean, I hear the game was fine. Yes, but it, that's just it. Just like just going in this other direction. There was so much they could have done now that they weren't like constrained specifically. Honestly. And yeah, that's a good point. Honestly, I think that just like the Diablo phone game, they just messed up by how they um the timing, how, yeah, the timing. Because if they did like follow shelter, just like here's um what we you're gonna get new Metroid soon. Here's a Metroid spin-off in the in the meantime. People be like, oh cool, whatever, let's see what these guys are doing with their shooter tactics. But no, this is like, here's Metroid. Oh basically what they did with Samus Returns. Samus Returns didn't need Metroid Prime 4 as a companion. It could have stood on its own. So they should have released Samus Returns on its own and released Federation Force with the news that another Samus game is coming. Well, I can't. Well, well, yeah, that's. I mean, that's. Yes, that's what we wanted. But I'm saying so much that I can't really say. Metroid has not been my thing, but I've always like after a cert, after other M, like I've given I gave it like more attention. What's I I mean I I played Zero Mission and Fusion and I I was Zero Mission annoyed me from time to time but I really enjoyed Fusion and maybe because it was more linear and I wasn't and I just like didn't get stuck at certain points because oh turns out I was supposed to bomb that one little spot on the wall thanks for telling me game I would have figured that out on my own. It's there. That's and just like outside of that, I'm not ever excited for Metroid games. But the lore in the games interests me enough that I keep tabs on it. Mhm. Mm it's kind of like with the um here with Castlevania. Like after after they got past the normal um, title stuff. Oh, by the way, just like, this was me, I, I think this was me um, thinking, there's something I missed. Because uh, I think I saw this level already, um, in hard mode. Am I right? Oh yeah, there it is. Because that wall looks suspicious before, it had a little indentation, but a normal thing didn't actually get rid of it, so I thought, oh, I guess it's nothing, but then I realized that Oh yeah, sometimes these walls need a need a, a, a rush attack instead of a normal um, um, shoulder tackle. Which is so another thing with like... Metroid. Um, with sometimes it needs power bombs, sometimes it needs regular bombs. Sure, thanks, okay. Or it sometimes it needs blasts or missiles or whatever, and 
only certain panels will tell you which one's which. Thank you, I did not need that in my life. Anyways, um... So, the, the frog... The frog stuff for the Emerald Passages don't really change much. I mean, the frogs usually barely change much to begin with. It's only in the last... Um, it, it's only in very specific ones that they decide to go and be a bit creative. Uh, but, yeah, at this point I have enough health to just speed through this. I mean, I don't need to rush. They give you enough time. But, yeah. you know, I'm getting a move on. Uh, but back with um, the stuff that I was going to talk about. Uh, Castlevania, actually. Uh... The Game Boy Castlevania is all to the DS stuff, which is basically Metroidvanias. Very interesting, very cool, very cool stories being told. In fact, I really, I that's how I associate Castlevania instead of the, instead of like the older games, um, or the remakes of those older games. The thing is that I've played three of them. One is um, Area of Sorrow which is an amazingly designed game and super fun, and I only got stuck once. The other two, however, still fun enough, but I kept getting stuck, and just like, I wasn't interested enough to just keep going. I'm probably going to um, go back and like finish those games just, just because, you know, well, I, I don't think I got far, but Kind of like with Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, I know I can do it now. Um, so I just want to do it. Uh, by the way, this is the incorrect way of doing, of getting the, the, um, the keyser. But it's supposed, you're supposed to get the frog thing and then come back here later. But I was just like, no, I know I can do this. And it turns out, I can. So yeah. Game just started, portal's right there, got the keyser. Nice. So are you gonna skip the whole level? No. I no, mean you can't because you need the, the four things. Yes. And even then you you can't go back through the thing without getting the frog statue at least. Um What else? What was I saying? Okay, yeah. Uh so just getting stuck in games. Ah, oh, man. Getting stuck in games is one of the worst feelings. Like, I can take tedium to certain levels, of course. But I do not want to get stuck. Just the massive halt and just, like, having having to just, like, spend so much time. I was playing Far Cry Primal, Primal, Primal earlier today. And I had to go and hunt some things for this guy called Erky. And just you have you're given a general area of where the things are and also the things you need to get. Now the problem is that one of them is just like they say get get ravens. Uh, what am I, how am I supposed to get ravens here? Huh? Shoot them out of the sky. And so it's, I was just like, what, well, well, okay, ravens, how, are, are, is there a raven's nest here with raven baby birds or something that I'm going to deal with? But no, it turns out you're supposed to go underwater and there are just dead ravens at the bottom. Just never happened before at all. Cool, I guess it's happening now. But then they ask you for snow, a snowbird. Now I have no idea what a snowbird is. And just like, look, whatever it is, it's got to be in this area. So I search the entire lake, which is filled with predator fish, by the way. So I had to avoid them. And then I notice that there's a cliff. It's just like, okay, so maybe they'll have that thing just like where they're like, I get them in the nest. Turns out the cliff leads to like nowhere. And I'm just sitting here constantly like re-scouring the places that I've already been in. And so I couldn't get that snowbird. It turns out that after I decided to just go and do, go and search it up on YouTube, 
something we both need to do much more on. Well, I mean, I'm fine with it, but uh, I'm fine with it now. But back in the past, I did. I basically did this at the same way you did for a while. Um, but in between all of that, it's, it turns out that the snowbird is a flightless bird that was stuck on a small island um, in the middle of the lake I was swimming in. Just, I did. Continue. It's it's just the the feeling of being stuck, and and everything just halts my enjoyment. I was like, okay, cool. I'm wasting my time, like nothing else. There's no progression happening. Just I'm literally just Is wasting that why time. Why you prefer, um, for example, Omega Ruby to High Gold and Soul Silver? Once you're Put in a tedious situation. It's like your time's being wasted. Yeah, well, I mean, that's uh, one of me, the reasons I'm, why I'm I willing prefer... to get rid of some convenience if it means I'm more immersive experience. I absolutely am the well, okay, not the opposite, but you no, know, just like when when something when something is how I feel unnecessarily um, tedious. Just, I, I get the whole Im- I get the whole immersive gameplay and everything, but I'm more on the side of fun than immersion. Um, not I've, of course both are important. I don't think I need to say that, but whatever. Um, but in in the end, I a lot of these games on a basic level are made for are made the thing the game is made around the mechanic of the thing I'm supposed to be having fun with. Immersion is not the reason I came to play the game. And so when that thing is stripped away from... And so when um, the fun part is stripped away from me, because, oh, we just we just gotta do this for th- at this point, it's... Oh, I love this puzzle. Um, it's really just more annoying than anything. Because I hate wasting time. I really hate wasting time. So yeah, maybe that's why just like with action I'm more of an action game person or more of a something where something is always happening. It's not that I'm impatient, I can wait, but I don't like having my time wasted. And so I guess if we're going to apply it to what you just said, ahem, Heart Gold and Soul Silver's leveling. Oh no, when I say I found some tedium, I didn't mean the leveling system. Yeah, of course, just like there's no way you could have, because that's just, that's, there's no, there's not even immersion at that point. It's it just, it's just annoying. Yeah, I, let me think, do I find any leveling system more annoying? Okay. When it comes to leveling and distribution, heart gold and soul silver. Both leveling and distribution are bad. Leveling's bad for obvious reasons. Distribution, too many good months are like after. In Canto. Uh, not really. I'm I'm talking about high level sources over right here. Oh. Too many good months. Well, are, there is still a lot of too many in in Canto for what I think should be an adequate number. Yeah, um, I, I think there are too many good months are after Alazia Town, like. Because of how gentle is designed, Be- because yeah, because of how gentle is designed, they expected you to d- looking for the new Pokemon because ooh, it's a uh, you the whole new to, world we live in. Yeah, they wanted to make use of the different methods. So like the the new mans, you headbutt trees and find new mans. You um, find mans from eggs with breeding. You get new Pokemon from the Safari Zone. When it comes to Hagrid and Soul Silver, a ton of Pokemon. Like most of the Kanto exclusive Pokemon are just put in the Safari Zone. So they expect it to work. Yeah, like fishing, you're going to find your Pokemon from that rather than just in the overworld. So that's how the game is designed, which means that you don't see many new ones, which is annoying. And a lot of them come. Do you after realize how meeting. much. How, do you realize how much after playing. Um, 
which one was it? Soul Silver. How I hated Tentacool. Like how I oh, yeah. developed Tentacool an unnatural is... hatred for that thing. Well, I already hated Tentacool from Jim. Like, three. look, here's here's the thing. I I know that's what I'm saying. I already played Emerald, and I adore Emerald. I already had my fill of him, but he just there was nothing else in that water. There was nothing else. Yeah, you only the ocean water has only tentacle, and you only find different things from river and lake water. But yeah, so those two—that's the problem with the, with with the, that game. Um, I have a problem the with thing Gen Five he... distribution. A huge problem with Gen Five distribution because all of Gen 5's Pokemon evolve at level sixty and level fifty-five and level forty-five. And so you're going through the game with one stage ones and two stage ones. No, with, with the first stage I mean, it depends, stage so but there, the thing is that yeah, Gen depends. 5 has enough good mods anyways that that doesn't really bother me that much, but it does frustrate me. It doesn't... Here, here's the thing. Because I, all, whenever playing Pokemon games, where I can, I always try and decide to use different Pokemon than my different team, with very specific exceptions. Love you, Gardevoir. Anyways, um... The thing is that I, of course, I plan out, I, I've gotten to the point where I now plan out my team beforehand um, based, off, ba based off what I want to try and also the convenience of getting them. So I haven't actually replayed Black um, or Black 2 yet. And so... Maybe I'll feel it when I go back. But for right now, it doesn't bother me that much. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, yeah, there's enough other good Pokemon that this wasn't a big deal for me. But it is something to know. So, like, um, there's that famous one. Hydreigon. The other famous one. Uh, Volcarona. Yes, Volcarona. It was ridiculous. But then I mean, the Volcarona third... is available very early, though. Well, technically mm. very early and very late. You can get it easily, is the thing. No, that's only in Black 2. You sure? That thing where the Volcarona is in Desert Resort. And you can get it at an early level, or you can, like or you can come back later and it's level 60. I'm thinking that's only Black 2. I mean, I could be wrong, but my guess hmm. is that's only Black 2. I could have, I could have sworn it was in black. And here's my controversial opinion: Kalos has the worst distribution. I wouldn't know. Oh yeah, the thing is. Well, I. Well, oh Kalos right, I thought Pokedex, Kalos just had everything. Wasn't that it? Kalos's Pokedex has four hundred and fifty Pokemon. And yet, but, only sixty-nine of them are from Kalos. Well, yes, but Kalos has 450 Pokemon. Um, 69? Yeah, because like, six of them are legendaries. So, yeah. It's the 452 Pokemon. And very few water routes. No special ways to collect Pokemon. So, everything is in the grass. And so, every route has a thousand Pokemon in it. And you will miss everything. It's annoying. It's so like. I mean, only, at least you, when I get completely to... overwhelmed with ten thousand Pokemon every route. I mean, that's that. That was I. I already felt overwhelmed in back two, where they kept giving me good Pokemon all the time. It was like I only have six slots. Stop. Yeah. Okay. Black two and yeah, black two does do that. I think black flu, black flu, black two three hundred. Man, a I great think you got number. that black flu. Yeah, three hundred is a great number, but they do. I I would say they. Push yeah, but Unova it a already bit. has a lot of Pokemon to begin with. Yeah, but yeah, I th I think they push it a bit in Black Two. You got, you're gonna cut this one close when it comes to the amount of good Pokemon because you're, you're getting stuff like, um, you're getting a lot of good Pokemon by. Um, what's that very bad? You're gonna have a there's a lot of good Pokemon. So I think they cut it a bit close when it comes to the quality. But wait, I'm... do I actually make it in time? Do I show? Is this where I show off what happens when things start crumbling? Yep. 
everything well, good. You still have time after. Yeah, you just you um, you just lose um your money at an increasing rate, uh, and then I think it either auto kicks you out or you lose your health really quickly, and then it kicks you, and then you basically die after that. But yeah, Kallus' Cal- Cal- distribution is awful. In in like the opposite effect of Johto, where it gives you too much, and then yeah, so it's poke. What was it? Distribution and leveling. Kallus' leveling is fine. I, I think the leveling is well. Yeah, Kallus' leveling is fine. The thing with Kallus though is that when I play it, um, of course I I make. I attempt to make little stories out of my Pokemon games, my personal experiences. Um, it's basically an excuse to get rarer Pokemon that I wouldn't get in other games, in other games um, with the story or whatever. That would have just been inconvenient there that I wanted to use anyways. So yeah, that's gonna help. Plus, I stopped do I stopped dealing with the rule. Um, to have only like seven like in rotation um, depending on how easy it is to level these things to, to level these things up or how what I use them for so now because in Emerald the Emerald story I have like I think in the end barring Safari Zone Pokemon which I don't focus on she ends up with nine no wait ten I, like, like, I do... always have more than six. No, I, I can't say always. But I usually have more than six. Well, the thing for is that's... Some, for like Emerald, I, I, Emerald is hard to have more than six. So I, I'm, I had like seven in Emerald. Well, I have... Well, that's just it. In terms of actual active teams, I have seven. Um, especially since like since I use like weaker mods in that, in that one. Um, just they're easy to level up. Uh, but in terms of like general use, that's where the ten comes in. Uh, the thing um with that is that depending on how much they interact with the um party, I guess that's where I'd like give them their own personalities or whatever for the story I write. Uh, and so, like, if if I have an HM slave, then they're still going to be part of the story. That kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Very kind lightning bug. Yeah, that I mean, it's it, it, they don't want to make it impossible for you. And I do th- this boss like. I do horribly on him because you. What you can do is that you can, if you avoid the zombie drippings, you can immediately go back on the ladders, and then ground pound him again to get multiple hits. And I keep messing that up because if you do, if you drop down immediately at that point, um, then it's just not. It's just not going to register. See. And the thing is that as long as you're a zombie, he's going to be—he's going to stay up there and taunt you. So that will waste your time. Right, but just quickly say that last game with terrible distribution. And see that treasure right. almost flies away. I almost lose it, but nope. Just it it was like maybe like a few like one second before flying away and me losing it forever until I until the final boss of the game. Cause I don't know I forget if I mentioned this, but if you lose it maybe I did very early on, but if you lose a treasure in the boss time, you're not getting that back until you beat the game um and try that boss again. Um to try and get the best ending. You... Yeah, you've told me. Okay. But yeah, we've unlocked the golden pyramid inside the golden pyramid. Naturally. Look, and it even has an eye on it. How quaint. One final level till we're done. <laughs>